Hello everyone. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about water circuit analogies. And stay tuned till the end of the video to watch a cute animal. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. When you first begin circuits, it can be pretty counterintuitive because you can't see electricity at all. But it actually turns out that there are some really good mechanical analogies to circuits. And so before we even talk about electric circuits, what I want to talk about is water circuits. Essentially water flowing through pipes and then going through different things like valves or pumps or water wheels. And it turns out that there are some remarkable similarities. So what I'm going to do in this video is explain how water circuits work. And if we can understand how water circuits work, then once we get to electric circuits, I think things will be a lot more intuitive. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by sketching out a basic water circuit. So let's say you have two tanks. And you've got one on the ground here and one that's raised up. I'll go ahead and add some water here in the tanks. And then you have uh, pipes that come out here and then down here. And then they hit like a, a water wheel or like a turbine or something like that. And you can do something, some sort of useful thing with that. And then it flows into here. And so this is your, your water wheel. And then you have another pipe here, and this goes to a pump, and then it exits, and then you have water exiting and going into the tank here. So um, essentially, you've got uh, water flowing from the upper tank to the lower tank because uh, they're at different heights, right? And so the water's falling through, and then it spins this turbine, so it converts that, that potential energy, that stored potential energy in the water into some sort of useful work of some kind. And then it gets repumped back up into this tank. And then again, it then releases and falls that falls, um, falls down again and then releases that potential energy. So what's causing this circuit to have a continuous uh, flow of water is the fact that the two tanks are of different heights. Um, if they were the same height, then sure, you'd have that pump that was, that's, you know, pumping water into this other tank. But then once it gets into the other, other tank, it would have no motivation to uh, flow down uh, if there was no difference in, in height. So we can say that the thing that is really moving the, the water through this water, or through this water wheel is a difference in potential energy. And so we could call this voltage. Um, so voltage for water circuits, uh, but it's actually very similar to voltage for electric circuits as we'll see. Um, but essentially it would be the, um, the potential energy, um, Difference, oops, difference. Let me zoom in here. There we go. 
per gallon of water, let's say. So um, essentially the greater the height between these two tanks, um, the more energy is, gravitational potential energy is stored in that upper tank. And so um, the potential energy then is released as it falls down. Um, so essentially the greater the height, the greater that, that potential energy difference, gravitational potential energy between these two, um, these two tanks, and therefore um, the greater the, the voltage. And so that's essentially what's motivating the water to flow through, and the, the greater that voltage is, the faster the water is gonna flow, right? So we could call that um, current, And that's basically can be defined as the number of gallons that flow by per unit time, I'll just say per, per minute. Um, so those are two really important quantities that you will see show up in, uh, in circuits. And there's a third quantity called resistance. So as water is flowing through this, this water circuit here, there's gonna be some mechanical like friction um, as the water's flowing through, right? The bearings that that water wheel is on is not gonna be perfect and it's going to, to impede the flow, right? And if the bearings were like really rusty, then it'd probably provide like a lot of resistance. And if, um, if it was like, and, and the size of the water wheel actually probably depends, um, on how much resistance it, it provides and, and all of that. So essentially, uh, if, you, if you wanted to, um, uh, let's say you had like really rusty bearings, you would need a really large uh, difference in height in order to provide enough, enough force to be able to turn um, that turbine rapidly. Um, so, Essentially, the relationship that would describe uh, that is, is this. The, the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. So hopefully that, that makes sense, right? If you, if you had a turbine that, that was running and it required a huge difference in heights between your tank, um, and you noticed that the, the flow was not very strong too. Well, a really large, a really large voltage, um, so a really large voltage, and then a small current, that means your resistance would be very high in that case. So this, this relationship actually is called Ohm's law in circuits. That's typically just expressed as V equals IR, and it is a very fundamental relationship that you will be using in this course very frequently. Um, so that, that's the, a, a very basic water circuit, and in the next video I will do a more complicated water circuit to explain some other uh, fundamental laws, and then we can get into actual electric circuits and see how that compares. Hello everybody, thanks for watching. If you found this content helpful, uh, would you please consider liking and subscribing to the channel? That will help other people find it. And if, if you won't do it for me, Will you do it for my cat, Muon? Named after my favorite subatomic particle, by the way. So, um, she will be very, very upset if you do not like and subscribe. So please, um, don't, don't disappoint. How, how could you say no to this cuteness?